Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about word sorts. In fact, I have three tips or ideas that you can take and use in your classroom when you are doing word sorts with your kids. If you are already using this practice in your classroom, this video might just give you a few fun ideas to switch it up, or it might make you, you know, give yourself a little pat on the back and say, awesome, I'm doing this perfectly right. And if you are not using word sorts, or if you are thinking about trying to use them or wanna know more, I hope this video gives you some ideas so you can feel more confident doing a word sort in your classroom. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if not, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher, and I'm actually getting my master's degree in curriculum and instruction right now. And in the meantime, I like to make videos like this for teachers just like you here on YouTube. So if you are ready for these tips, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. Now, using word sorts in your classroom is a great activity because it gets students to really study the words and decode the words in front of them to kind of see what the similarities and differences are amongst these different words, right? So typically you would choose a skill that students are working on or reviewing and students would have to read the words and sort them into categories. And these categories can be based on many different things. For example, you might be working on short A CVC words and you might have words like pan and man and cat and students would have to sort them by that ending pattern that at or that an. Now tip or idea number one I have for you is to use an open sort. Now this is something I always do with my students and an open sort simply means that you don't tell them what categories they need to sort into. So students have to look at the words themselves and figure out which categories these should belong in. This really has students stretch their knowledge of the words they're looking at and often they have to actually decode them, listen to them out loud and figure out, wait a second, these words, they all end in A-N and these words all end in A-T, at and an, I think these are the two different categories. Now I will say in kindergarten and first grade, I almost always stick to two main categories they are sorting into. And as students get older, they can have three categories, four categories. It's really, you know, limitless as the students get much older and they might even find different ways to sort the same set of words. When doing this with my younger students, especially at this time in the year, in the fall, I absolutely have them decode the word, say it aloud, and really try to figure out what two categories they can make with their words. Now also this is an activity I would do in a small group setting pretty often. So I would really like to have my students decode that word, I can listen to them, and I can ask them their reasoning behind the two different categories they chose and kind of guide them as needed. Now naturally with any activity or thing that you're teaching with your kids, you're gonna wanna model this first. Um, but then once students get the hang of it, you can do so many word sorts, which is why I love this activity. The differentiation is basically endless. To help guide my youngest learners even more, I would usually do a sorting sheet like this one. And you can see up at the top, it says short A. Um, that is the skill that we will have been focusing on, but there are two different word families here. And again, there's a spot for them to write an and at once they figure out what the sort is or what the two different categories are. Tip or idea number two when doing word sorts is to actually have them use images instead of words. Now I love having my students do this because it turns it into a phonemic awareness activity instead of a word study activity. And you can realistically do both. I like to have a little differentiation within these word sorts. And here you can see an example of what I'm talking about. Here is that an and at sort I mentioned earlier. But here there are actually images of the pictures instead. And so differentiation number one is to have students just say the image aloud and they have to really listen to the differences between the two words to decide the categories and figure out where to sort them. 
Now I also like a little space on top, or you can just have students right next to it. I like to have them practice encoding the words as well, or spelling the words. So once they've gone ahead and figured out where they belong, I have them go back in with a marker or a crayon, and I actually have them write the word down next to the image or on top of the image. This is a great way for them to really extend that learning after they've used their phonemic awareness skills, and then again, they're practicing that encoding. That image I just showed is actually from my word sort unit. It looks like this over on TPT. If you are in the SJT Literacy Club, that is also already included under literacy games when you log into the club. But so many people asked me about the word sorts that I wanted them to be available on TPT for you guys too. So within that little unit, I have all the differentiated ways for each sort. So for an and at example, the short A example, you have image only for students to just practice phonemic awareness. You have a place for them to actually encode the word. And then you also have just the actual words for them to sort and do word study as well. All right, tip and idea number three is to make sure you throw in oddball words. Now I don't do this until after my students have had some good practice sorting these words into two different categories and they really get a hang of this activity. But that is when I like to spice it up a little bit. I did a video not too long ago, it looks like this, and it was called Three Mistakes Teachers Make When Teaching Phonics. And one of the mistakes that we too frequently make is that we forget to review old skills. Now, doing a word sort is a great way to review some previously taught skills. For example, if you are doing a word sort with some short E words and students are sorting the words or sorting the pictures, you can throw in two, maybe three short A words that you previously had taught. Now, I wouldn't just throw this at my K through two learners and just throw in some extra words. Instead, I would of course model this first by doing a sort in front of the class. And I would say, oh, clearly these words here are, you know, et, and Ed. I've decided the two different categories, this makes sense. But wait a second, what's this word? This is cap. What are we gonna do with cap? And this kind of gives the idea of an oddball word. And then I usually just have them put that word on the side and have them explain why it's an oddball word. Why doesn't it belong in either of those categories? And you can do this with any of those differentiated ways I shared. You can do it with images, throw in a couple oddball ones, and you can do it with just the words. Not only is this a great way to review old skills, but it's a great way to have students really thinking about the sounds in the words that they are reading or that they're looking at in the image, so the sounds that they're saying. How are these sounds different? How are these letters different? How are they the same? And it lets them, again, really stretch their thinking about where these words should go. Thankfully, word sorts are a pretty low prep activity. I just like to open up a PowerPoint or a Microsoft Word document, insert a little table, of between eight to 12 words, let's say, and I just type in the different words that my kids are going to be sorting. And again, if you keep it to about two different categories, hi, Sally. If you keep it to about two different categories, it should be easy enough to come up with the words that you need for your students. So there you have three simple ideas or tips to use with your own kids when you are doing a word sort activity. If you do wanna check out that word sort unit, I will leave it linked in the description down below. And as always, I do hope Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one.